Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday morning to you. And a big thank you to Queen Quoka on Twitter for the above photo. We have a lot to cover. No, I have not rectified my issue with YouTube. Yes, I am still working on it, but let's just jump in, shall we? Let's go. We are going to start off this morning with one of my favorite people, Zara Tyndale. She is attending day two of the Cheltenham Showcase event, and uh, she looked absolutely lovely. She was there with some friends. Now, beyond the races, there are also Q&A sessions with people from the racing world and a book signing session with Nikki Henderson. And uh, yeah, so Zara was there. Um, apparently, it was raining and very cold, but she was there with some friends, and I think she looked very nice. A big thank you to Remy Lot Sauce as usual for showing us what she was wearing. Moving on. So now we're going to go on to King Charles. Apparently he put up a notice talking about an investiture. For those of you who don't know, it's when somebody is awarded an honor and they get that award in person from a member of the royal family. Well, this week, apparently, a lot of investitures went on. There were some by King Charles. There were some by Princess Anne. We also know that Prince William also does some as well. I think it's pretty cool. I love this. All right, moving on. All right, next up, this is interesting. Apparently, a documentary about Tyler Perry's you know, life and career made its world premiere at the 2023 AFI Fest in Los Angeles. Apparently, this is, takes a look at his faithful road to the top of the industry, they're saying, that didn't always include him. It goes from childhood, which is described in the article as quote-unquote living hell, all the way to being a billionaire media mogul. Now, Interestingly enough, well, first of all, this took place at the Chinese Theater, you know, the world famous Chinese Theater in Hollywood. But the film also features Oprah Winfrey, Whoopi Goldberg, Gail King, go figure, Ari Emanuel of Endeavor Talent, mm -hmm, um, and a bunch of really big names. You know who wasn't there? Meghan Markle. She wasn't in the movie. She wasn't at the screening. And, um, you know, the other thing that I always wondered was, how did Megan call Tyler Perry to say we need a place to stay? And he offered up his, his airplane and his house. Now I realize that the information was passed to her through Oprah Winfrey. But yeah, I couldn't help but notice that Megan was a no-show in every way, shape, or form at this event. Why wasn't she invited, you know? Interesting. Maybe Tyler Perry is upset over the fact that she leaked where they were staying. And don't forget, Tyler Perry said in the Netflix docuseries that he had to put up fences and plant trees because he'd never seen anything like it. And then, of course, he found out later on that it was all due to Megan. Mm -hmm. Moving on to Prince Harry again, out without Megan, without the children. He did a pose. He was out with a millionaire. He apparently is a football fan, and he was beside one of the new owners of the LAFC. His name is Sean Neff. He's an investor advisor, and he joined the ownership group. It was announced on Instagram, and he then included a picture with Prince Harry. Um, they both look, to be honest, absolutely toasted in the photo. Now, according to the article, the game was played September 3rd, and the L.A. team had just lost to Inner miami That's the one that's owned by David Beckham. And therefore, he was getting in the car and was about to leave to go back to Meghan Markle, but I don't believe that for one second. Now, supposedly, they were sitting in the director's box we know Harry didn't pay for it. It costs between $3,000 and $9,000, and the seats come with beer, wine, fruit, hot dogs, nachos, blah, blah, blah. Now, supposedly, this is all going on while he and Megan are fighting over money because she never thinks they have enough, and I think he's done with it. You know what I mean? In these pictures, Harry looks awkward. He looks rough. He looks like he's had too much to drink. And when you look at this picture, I agree with Megan's mole. You can absolutely smell the bad body odor, stale cigarettes and whiskey just from looking at it. Moving on. Moving on, articles are coming out saying that Harry and Megan are about to have a really bad week. 
First of all, William is about to zip off to Singapore for the third annual um, Earthshot Prize, which we know is doing well. It's going to continue to do well. And basically, the article says Harry's going to have to watch the press coverage about what a great philanthropist his older brother is and watching, you know, all the bells and whistles be rolled out that he can't get anymore. And the day after that, Megan has to go to Tampa, Florida to appear because her sister Samantha is suing her for defamation. And she tried to say she wanted to zoom in and the judge says no. And if this goes on to discovery, oh my goodness, if the case doesn't get dismissed, Megan's going to have to hand over all of the private texts, emails, and other documents from her half-sister. It's going to be big. After that comes Remember in Sunday where they go to the Cenotaph. And remember, this upsets Harry because he's lost his military role. We know that he asked the Queen to lay a wreath for him. Remember, the wreaths are not personal. They're laid on behalf of military things and he's not part of that anymore. So when he realized he couldn't get on there, they went and closed a cemetery down and trampled on American graves several days before so that they could be released to rival the royal family stuff. Mm hmm And then, let's not forget that Harry's going to get the ruling in his high court phone hacking case against the Mirror Group newspaper that's supposed to come down that uh, week. So if it uh, doesn't go Harry's way, that's going to be bad. Then, right after that, it's King Charles's 75th birthday. He's going to have a party at his house with private, you know, party with close family and friends of which Harry and Meghan will not be invited. So the article is pointing out that with the uh, outings and the big prizes and the big birthdays, the Sussexes are literally on the blink. They're stuck in neutral. They put them meh in Megxit. They haven't announced new projects or a business deal in more than two years. The only thing that's been announced is that they've been fired. <laughs> I can hear the crockery crashing in Montecito. Moving on. So while Harry's relationship with his family is in complete tatters, just like Megan's relationship with everybody in her family is in tatters except for one person, they're saying that Harry's relationship is okay because he's gotten very close with Doria, that they see each other frequently. I bet they do because after all, it's rumored that Doria is living in their mansion with them. Yeah, I bet she does see them. I mean, hell, she's taking care of the kids. Of course she lives there. So the article says that they enjoy a close relationship. They spend summer breaks and anniversaries with Doria. Doria plays a big role in creating a special Christmas for her grandchildren. Uh-huh. Because when Harry and Doria first met, she said, quote, He was six foot one, a handsome man with red hair, really great manners, just really nice. And they looked so happy together. Yeah, like he was the one. And of course, Harry came out and said, Her mom is just amazing. Interesting, he never even got the chance to meet Thomas Markle. Now, this article brings up the car chase that wasn't. Remember the one where they claimed it was a two-hour high-speed chase through midtown Manhattan, which we already know the mayor said didn't happen and everybody said it could not possibly have happened? Well, the article says that Harry and his mother-in-law endured this terrifying experience together and the happy times have outweighed anything else. So, yeah, it was reported in 2021 that Doria moved into their home to be on hand after the birth of their daughter and she was overjoyed, blah, blah, blah. By the way, remember when Megan said she was suicidal, she didn't tell anybody? Well, according to this article, she told her mother, and Doria said, it broke my heart because I knew that it was bad to be picked at by these vultures picking away at her spirit and to think of not wanting to be here. So now the narrative has changed again. Anyway, they're trying to take up the space that Harry used to have with William and Charles. But in the end, somehow, I think this is all going to come crashing down. Moving on. Now we're going to fall into this article which came out saying that Harry and Meghan's lives changed forever when they got a devastating Halloween phone call. It was back in 2016. It was Halloween. Harry and Meghan were going out to a party with Eugenie and Jack and they took all these fabulous pictures together but somehow the press got a hold of the fact that Meghan and Harry were dating. Gee, 
could this Instagram post above that she put up have anything to do with it? Or maybe this Instagram post where she was clearly wearing the same bracelets that Harry was wearing. She put a lot of things up on Instagram to give people hints. I think as it came with the Megxit leak and when it came to Tyler Perry's leak, I think she leaked it. She wanted people to know that she was dating Harry. So she leaked the information and that, that's when it all came out into the public. And I think Harry is so thick that he didn't even realize what she had done. Mm -hmm. Now, really quickly, I want to touch one more time on the Sandringham Summit and the fact that Harry did agree to everything that was in that summit. Everything. He agreed to everything and then broke the terms. His father still paid for him for a full year. He knew he was going to lose his security, but he literally thought that he could have his cake and eat it too. He literally thought that they just wouldn't go through with the agreement. Crazy. Now with that, I want to point out what this person on Twitter said because literally it's spot on. The royal family are not a normal family. I mean, this is spot on. They live in a hierarchical nature, in a hereditary monarchy. No two members of the family are equal in status. There's always an heir and several spares. And members are continually shunted down the line as new people are born. As a result, you can never relax into your position. Now, people like Anne and Edward, they accept that. They live with it and they're fine. But then you got people like Harry. Everything is unfair. Everything is unjust. And they try to undermine everybody that's above them because they don't want to be the spare. He wants to be the heir. And Diana did try to raise the boys equally. We know that even though she knew William would be king, but I think she thought Harry would be William's wingman. But I agree. Harry's emotional development stopped when he was 12 at his mother's death. He's always been immature, he's always been petulant, and he's jealous and he's vengeful. His wife, you know, just added to the mix, gave you the man you see today. I've said it before, he's never grown up. He's still 12 years old emotionally. That's why he's got drug and alcohol problems. The world is unfair. The word has always been that Harry has been an overly needy, emotional child who used to push William out of the way and who wanted his mother for himself. And he's never grown out of it. All right, you guys, I really want your comments on this one. What tricks do you think Harry and Meghan are going to do to try to pull attention away from everything that's going on? Because we know that's what they do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell. If you've already done it, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to leave those comments. If you've donated to my coffee fund or through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.